Randy, uh, first off, thank you so much for doing this. Really, really appreciate what you've been up to. Well, I'm kind of hanging out here in San Diego, California. Uh, this is where I spend my winter months, and uh, actually I'm getting ready to pack up to come back to Ontario next week. I go back up to Manitoulin Island area, and I've been in the Sudbury area for born and raised, so I've got a cottage on Manitoulin that I spend my summer months at. So between San Diego and Manitoulin Island, I don't get to see snow. <laughs> That's smart, Randy. I like that idea. And ho hopefully traveling home, there's still some hockey going on. So uh, I'm a little jealous. I'm up in Thunder Bay. But, you know, this Leafs series, you know, what's your take from the outside looking in? What do you think of this Leafs team and the way it's going so far against the Bruins? Well, I think it's just a typical, you know, playoff series. There's ebbs and flow and momentum swings. And, you know, uh, the one big thing for the Leafs from, that stands out and everybody's talking about it, it's obviously their special teams. You know, their power play, you know, has not kind of hit the hit the ground running and it's cost uh, you know them uh, momentum in games and it, it it wears on you the longer it's ineffectiveness stays in place the the bigger uh, problem it becomes and that's uh, you know one of the things and obviously their Brad Marchant has made an impact on the series already and he consistently knows how to do that he's a tremendous player but he draws a lot of attention to him and there seems to be a lot of focus uh, from the Toronto side on on him and to me those are the kind of things that they have to correct and correct in a hurry watching these two teams Randy square off again does it bring back the feels for you from like a decade ago and squaring off against Boston well it's always you know the playoffs are a different animal and the emotions run high and and obviously you know being involved with it over the number of years and you know playing in the playoffs and you know the ebbs and flows and you know I can remember the last time you know, we, that I was in it, it was against Edmonton. We lost the first two games at Edmonton, you know, and, and we had to come back and uh, get ourselves squared away. And it was something that we were trying to, you know, figure out as we've got to change something here. We've got to find a way to create an event and to change the momentum. And those are the kind of things that you try to uh, reflect on and, and use and keep in, in your toolbox. As far as a coach, there's things that always could be you could like to do differently and it's no different than uh the series that we played with boston years back yeah you know randy obviously that's important right trying to find a way to swing this series and for me obviously a different outlook right being a goalie but with some of these star players you got william nylander possibly back in the lineup here and mitch marner who's been you know struggling a little bit to get going you know as a coach what are you doing to try to propel them into the lineup to get them going because you know they can be a difference maker in this series well, I, I think what they've got to do is is just find different spots for them. And, you know, it, it, if maybe a, an extra shift on the fourth line. Um, uh, an offensive zone face-off, Marner and Matthews go together. Or put all three of them out. You know, just something to kind of stir the emotions and to give them a chance for their skills to come to the forefront. Those are the kind of things that you got to try, and you got to try – inside the game it's just a game inside the game i'm sure their coaching staff has tried those things it's, i haven't you know watched every shift that they've played but it, those are the kind of things that i'd always look to is try to find a way to instill some more confidence and let the player and his talent come to the forefront what have you uh, thought of the gamesmanship uh, in the series with the two head coaches, Jim Montgomery, Sheldon Keefe, going back and forth and back and forth? Did you like that style and, and utilizing the media sometimes to your benefit? Well, I think there's a time and a place for it, and I, and I think rightfully so. Uh, but I think it can't be a distraction. All you're trying to do is just trying to, you know, maybe wake the officials up to some of the things that are going on out there. Believe me, the officials know it. They review it. There's a supervisor there that is uh, in charge of this series. You have an opportunity in between games, and they'll come in and they meet with you. So that you'll go over and you'll show them if they don't already have it written down. And it's pretty much, you know, it's an, an ironclad process that takes place. And you have the opportunity to present the things that you didn't like about officiating to the the uh the supervisor for the series and the opposition does the same thing as far as what goes into the media i don't know if that really does you any good other than the fact that it gives the media something to write about yeah for sure and <clears throat> i always try to take our listeners down to the ice and what goes on but you know for me being a player not far removed 
I never understood the coaching side of it, the general manager relationship. Like I know you've played, you coach for a lot of different general managers. What do you think of Brad Tree Living, what he's done so far with this Leafs team? And how, and how has that relationship, you know, with the head coach and the GM work? You know, you kind of are a product of the players that they bring in. Yeah, it, it varies with the general managers and, and you know, and, and one general manager will, you know, will take the the stance that I bring you the players, you coach the players I bring, where other another general manager will take the stance, well, if we need this type of player, do you think he would fit? You know, there's, there's give and take in all those situations. There's draft choices, there's contracts, there's lots of mechanics that do take place, you know, between the coach and the general manager. And sometimes it works in your favor as a coach, and sometimes you have to do things that the general manager wants you to do. Uh, but usually in the playoffs, that stuff is all pushed to side. The number one thing is the most important thing is is to have success and gift your players and put them on the ice in the right time in the right situation so they can have success. Randy, what's happening behind the scenes when it comes to like injury disclosure? For example, we've talked a lot the last week uh, about Willie Nylander and his status. Uh, what happens behind the scenes when it comes to the coach, the GM, and everybody involved in terms of injuries? Because obviously that conversation – uh, has been has become stronger over the last decade or so. Where back, like in the day, really wasn't a combo. Well, I, I think what's happened is it's become airtight. I, I don't think anybody around the team wants uh, the opposition to know any of the bumps and bruises that are taking place. You know, uh, on your hockey club. Uh, you know, players have been known to target players in certain areas if they find that out. So I think it's kind of become airtight or ironclad that you lock it down. Everybody that's around your hockey club is only focusing on one thing, and that's the, the on-ice performance. And if you are, are part of that, it's part of your responsibility to make sure that nothing gets out of that dressing room and nothing gets in, is put out to anybody other than the fact that it's, what happens in the room stays in the room, and we're focusing on one thing, and that's providing uh, the best opportunity and, and the – the, the opportunity for your club to take the next step and win the next hockey game. It's all about winning the next one. Yeah, and that's always what it's about, right? I know playoff time gets ramped up. It's such a fun time of year. And, you know, on your perspective, now that you're, you know, done from the game and you're still watching, stay up, what do you think of the playoffs so far? What's your general overall think of the NHL and the way the playoffs have been? Well, to me, it's it's just like a new season. It's it's the way hockey should be played. If you look at the physicality that's involved, and and I watch all of the series, but I don't, wouldn't say I watch every game every minute because there's too many games going on. And I'm out here on the West Coast, so the games start at four o'clock, so I get a full uh, array of hockey, you know, from four o'clock till whatever time the West Coast teams finish playing. But the one thing that stands out is the amount of physicality that's involved in the series. And the emotions that are running and and how ramped up the fans are it's great to see the markets and the way people are cheering on their their home teams and and the enthusiasm but the unfortunate thing is, is there's going to be some very good teams losing the first round yeah there that's are tough. that's that, that's yeah. a tough one when you go through a, a a season and have you know close to 50 wins 100 and some points and i always looked at it as you had to have at least 10 games over 500 it might now mean 15 games over 500 to qualify for the playoffs. So, you know, you had a successful season and to lose in the first round can be, you know, earth shattering to everybody involved. I would love your take on the crowd. I'm happy you brought up sort of the crowd support uh, because that's been a big focus in this market the last couple of days is how quiet it was. I was there in the building for game three of this series. Do you remember back to your time? Like, you know, when you were the coach here, if, if that was a conversation ever had, like, how did you feel about it? Well, I, to me, I, I really don't remember the fans not being involved in Toronto. The emotions that they brought to the to the games, uh, you know, were, were was very high from my perspective and my memory. Uh, uh, you know, and in what happens in a lot of these situations, and and it's been, and I've read about it. Uh, Joe Bone, actually, is a good friend of mine. He was our junior announcer when I played junior hockey in Sudbury a long, long time ago. So I go back a long ways with Joe Bone and Holy Mackinac. And he stepped up, but that was his personal opinion. As far as the players and the coaches on the bench, I don't think that you really notice it as much as maybe he thought it was or as drastic as he thought it was. 
but uh, again, I think that's up to the on ice production or the in-house production to get their fans going. And the biggest responsibility is on the hockey club to do something, to get the fans out of their seats and get the emotions going. And I thought the Leafs did that early. I thought they were on the puck and they were winning their fair share of battles early against Boston, but they didn't maintain it. And I think the power play was a big issue with that. It, it took energy out of the building on them. Yeah, and that's obviously something that is hard to control and hard to explain in a hockey rink. And, and I've been on the side of it, momentum going against you or when you've had it. You know, for me, they get that goal, the momentum's riding, and they, and they keep that top line out, and they give a goal up against right away. What's your take on that as a coach? Like, are you riding the hot hand? You know, it was 30 seconds into a shift. You stay with them or you switch, or is that just a feel? That's just a feel. And I think matchups are important, and, and I was always a coach that was very strict with matchups. But as I watch, I think, you know, the Boston is what they're be being able to do in the series so far, and this is only the, 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 the games that I've been able to watch, it, is, is they've been able to match their D against whoever they wanted. And that's a big, big scenario that's working in their favor, is, is they don't have to change their forward lines as much as they're worried about their defensive pairs that they're going to play up against the Matthews line. You know, that's that to me is is a big part of what's happening. And they'll change one guy, change two guys. They'll start one and then, or, and then change one so that they've got their matchup on their back end that they require. Got a, got a feel for who's going to win this series? I don't know. It's too early. I think Toronto, when, when they went into Boston, they gave themselves life and they gave themselves the confidence that they can go in and they can win on the road. So I don't think this, this series is anywhere near close to being over. And to me, it's all about your response. The next one's the most important one, and the next game's the biggest game of the year. Can you just paint the picture what what a day by day looks like for Sheldon Keefe? You know, again, you had the unique uh, opportunity to be the head coach in Toronto, coach in the postseason. Day to day, like if you're Sheldon Keefe, what, what, like how are you thinking ahead? Obviously, there's a lot of noise from the outside. You're not are you paying attention to any of that stuff? Well, no, you don't pay attention to that. Sheldon Keefe's got his hands full. He's got to a, a worry about how, you know, uh, the game plan that they're going to place, uh, put in place, the players that he's going to have available. Is he going to, what adjustments he's going to make with his staff? There's a tremendous amount of work that goes on behind the scenes, you know, and he's got to make sure that he feels comfortable with what direction they're going in and, and him and his staff will be huddled up. I'm sure they're they're working on w what changes they can make on their power play. I'm sure they're looking at their defensive zone coverage. I'm sure they're looking at every aspect of the of their game that they feel they need to improve on. And they can't be perfect. But again, I think that they, they've done enough good things through the course of the season that they feel confident with their group. They're going to stick by their players, and their players have been able to deliver in most situations. But this is the playoffs. It's a new season. And now it's time for some people to step up. Very well said. Expect the unexpected, too. I don't know if you saw Lindy Ruff is back in Buffalo. Jacques Martin was in Ottawa. You still got that itch, Randy, or what? Uh, every once in a while, <laughs> I wake up with cold sweats. I think I'm coaching, and I'm actually not. So <laughs> it's Never been, say never, then? Yeah, I never say never, but I've had a good ride. You know, I, I started professionally playing at 20, and... I retired basically at 67, so I had 45 plus years of uh, being involved in the game, and the game's been very, very good to me. And you've been uh, great to us, Randy. Thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. No problem, guys. Anytime. Make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. We got long form interviews, we got clips, we got epic rants by Jay Rozo. We simply have it all. And don't forget, you can find out much more at theleafsnation.com. Thanks so much for watching.